back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another discussion style video for you guys, as well as some other things. We'll get into all of that, man. But today, I need to tell you guys a project that I'm going to be working on over probably the course of a year or so, I would say. It's probably going to take me at least a year, maybe even a little over a year. It may even take longer than that. I'm not entirely sure to get the full thing completed, but we're going to dive into all those things, take a closer look at all of it, and just kind of break it all down for you, tell you guys what I'm going to have to have to go into it, and I can ask you guys about what you have, you know, long-term for your collections and, and things of that nature, but I would say if people look at my collection, you probably think I'm insane, you probably think that I'm ludicrous, you probably think that uh, I have a few screws loose up top, you probably think that I'm clinically insane, you know, you look at my collection and you say, Jesus Christ, man, you got 77 Jeff Hardys? You have 105 plus John Cena's. You have 65 Finn Balor's and 65 Jeff Hardy's and 35 Kevin Owens and Triple H and Randy Orton and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It counts up all over the place. And I'm sure a lot of you probably feel that way when you look at my collection videos and things like that. I don't, I don't know what you think. I, I, I don't know. But I think that a lot of people know my collection for the John Cena collection. You guys know over there. Maybe I can put some B-roll in or something like that of the John Cena collection or something like that. But you guys know the John Cena collection. You know, I, I tried to get like every single look or, or all of his different shirts and like tried to get a really extensive John Cena collection moments, you know, kind of defining moments, different eras, different moments of John Cena's career. You guys know that he's my goat. He's my favorite of all time. So I wanted my John Cena's to be really excellent, have them all lined up on the shelf, really beautiful looking with all their shirts and things like that. Well, I finished that collection a while back, man. It's been a really long time ago now that I kind of completed that collection where, you know, I got the different armbands that Mattel hasn't made. I took some different different figures and customs and shirts and hats and kind of flipped them all around and kind of really completed that version of my collection where I was really proud of it and I pretty much had every look that I really wanted and all of those different things. Well, the other day, Brad, it kind of hit me that I wanted to expand it and you're probably like, why in the blue hell would you want to expand that collection? It's pretty extensive. It's pretty much broken down as good as you can get. Why in the hell would you want to do that? Well, I'm going to get into it. There's, there's actually quite a bit missing. So on my shelf, you have all the Fruity Pebble eras, you know, where it goes goes from red to blue to green to whatever the hell you want to say. But before that, man, I'm talking Chain Gang Cena. I'm talking my favorite era of John Cena where I fell in love with the character, where I fell in love with John Cena is in the Ruthless Aggression era, early Ruthless Aggression era. I'm talking 2002 till about 2008. Those are the looks that I really mainly care about, right? Like I care about all of his looks, but those are like the looks and I do have some of my personal favorites in there early on in the collection because those are the ones that mean the most to me. But I wanted to, I want to focus heavily on this era. Now, I don't think I'm going to go in there and get every single color of biker trunks that he wore. I will probably do a few here and there when he was the prototype and stuff like that. I'll probably get a couple of those and, and, you know, break those down a little bit. I have a few of those for customs and stuff, so we'll see about that. But mainly what I want to focus on, man, is I'm going to, from the Halloween episode, you guys remember the Halloween episode? From that moment right there, all the way up until like, maybe like May 2005 or summer 2005. I have some summer 2005 over there. But from that Halloween episode all the way up until mid-2005, I'm going to extensively research and I'm going to try and get every single John Cena look where he rocked a jersey hat armband combination. Now, I know mainly through this era he would rock like plain colored wristbands or like video game inspired wristbands or car inspired wristbands, Camaro logos on them, or he would have Mario mushroom armbands and he would have the three striped armbands with the red, white, and blue. But I'm talking all the different throwback jerseys that he wore, all the throwback hats, all the different random t-shirts he wore. He used to wear like lugs t-shirts to the ring. He used to rock like a t-shirt, long shorts, long jorts, and then rock wrestling boots. Like I'm talking all these different looks from 2002 or the end of 2002 until, you know, he, he started getting into the mainly jerseys look and then he kind of ventured off into his own jerseys and his own t-shirts and stuff like that until he won the WWE Championship from JBL. I'm literally going to extensively research and we're going to try and get every single look that John Cena has ever wore on WWE television. Now, I'll probably even break this down further as we go along. Long. Like, I'll probably end up getting the one Cena. I'll probably end up getting, you know, some of those other looks that are, like, on WWE television or, you know, they, they're known about. But this is something that I want to do. So I actually tried to venture off into this. Like, obviously, I know some of the iconic looks that I don't really have to look into. But some, like, I as a kid watching it, I don't remember every single thing he wore to the ring. So I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to have to research. I'm going to have to create logos. Like, if I look up a classic T-shirt and I have to I find, like, a, a good example is the Lugs T-shirt that he wore in 2002 at the end of 2002. This is just a random SmackDown. I, you can't find that shirt anywhere, or at least I looked extensively for it. So I'm going to have to go in and recreate the logo, recreate the colors of it, 
and then have a shirt customizer. Put it on a on a t-shirt for my John Cena's. Now, this is going to include hats. This is going to include those jerseys and all those different things. And it may even have to include some shorts sometimes. So I'm going to have to get custom shorts. I'm going to have to get custom logos and all these different things. So that's why I said it's probably going to take over a year to kind of work on this. I'm still doing the background research of it, but I would love to know what your thoughts are on that. Do you think it would be an awesome idea? I think it would be amazing to see like, I'll probably have like a whole wall dedicated to John Cena by the end of that time. Right now, I only have two or three rows of my collection on the wall, but I feel like once we get all of those put up, I mean, you're looking at if he was on SmackDown 52 weeks out of a year, you could just say 50 for a couple missed here and there. That's 50 John Cena figures for every year. And then you have pay-per-views. So we're looking at probably 100 plus more John Cena's, but I'm hoping that if I grab some here and there, I still have a ton in the, in the loose box of John Cena's, so that'll help out a ton right there as my base bodies. You know, we're going to get more John Cena's with double jointed arms outside of the Ultimate Editions. We're going to get new elites and new parts and new things for John Cena, so that'll help my collection out a lot as well. But I'm thinking if you put them up in the corner, if you take them and put them up in one of the corners and then they just go from the beginning and they just roll and roll and roll, they will probably fill up a whole entire wall and it would look so freaking sick, especially around like a centered piece or, or something like that. So we'll, we'll see about that. I am in the process of trying to get a new house and stuff like that. So when we get the new MDT room, we get the new WWE action figure room set up, that will be something that I have to try to take into consideration and be like, this is where the seniors are going to go and it's going to be filled up and it'll have a nice presentation to it and everything like that for the collection video. So maybe by, obviously not this year's, but maybe by the 2022 collection room tour video, we will have, you know, an extensive John Cena collection that's broken down with all the different jerseys, hats, all those different things. So hopefully that will be what we can get done. But I even have like a sheet right here where I have it all written down. I have like his, so what I'm doing is I have the list of pay-per-views that he was on from like, from around the beginning of 2003 all the way up until about mid 2005 is what I'm focusing on first. Then I'll venture on into other looks because there's other looks that I still want to do around the 2005, six, seven era with different armbands combinations and things of that nature. But I wrote down all the pay-per-views from there. I went back to SmackDown and I've been watching every single SmackDown, breaking down the looks, getting reference images. From there, I've looked up the jerseys that he wore, got different angles. If I couldn't find a clear, nice logo to help out the customizer of the shirts and jerseys that's going to be making the shirts and jerseys, I'll have to, you know, just recreate the logo and then send that to the customizer. So I left off at February 20th, 2003. Again, very early in the process, but I've knocked out about 12, 12 to 15 episodes or so, and I'll probably continue that later on. And, you know, I'm just going to, I got to get all the reference images first. That's the most important deal because I feel like you got to get the clothes first, right? And I feel like all of them pretty much need to have cloth accessories. They don't need to have like plastic shirts or something like that. So I feel like cloth accessories is the way to go. You know, getting the hats. I have a lot of extra hats, but it'll probably take more than that. You know, you got to get decals. It's a long, it's going to be a very long road, Brad, but I think at the end it's going to be very, very sick. And I think I will be pretty happy with that. It's just one of those challenges. You know, you set out to do Ultimate Edition Mock Collection Challenge. So there's no difference in this. Probably a lot cheaper to do just a mock collection of, of a certain collection. But I think at the end it would probably balance it out. If you got 30 different figures, they're all mock. They're all 100, 200 a piece, kind of like a Chase AEW figure collection. It probably round up to near the same. I'm not entirely sure. It just depends on the deals and stuff that you get. But buying in bulk, I would hope that it would help out. But that's what I'm kind of working on. I just wanted to know if you guys had a crazy, weird collection challenge. Maybe you have a random one. Maybe you have one that's very easy. I just want every Ultimate Edition mock. Maybe you just want the figures that you want and you want to open them up and collect them. If I have any mock collectors out there, if I have anybody that has a crazy action figure challenge for your collection, please let me know down in the comments below, but that is going to be mine. I'm going to try and get every single John Cena look that he's ever worn on WWE television, and it should be uh, it should be really fun, but uh, let me know what you guys think of that. Do you think that? I feel like that's pretty necessary for MDT in, in my collection just because of what we did in the past, but we want to crank it up to 10 a little bit and continue that and get deeper with it and just see how far we can go with it. It may drive me insane. It may be something that we that it takes a few years to complete, but I, I do want to try and do this, and if I get that done, I, I want to see what it all looks like up on the shelf there. So so we'll see about that, but let me know if you have any crazy action figure collection type goals in mind, or you guys have any weird stuff like that. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have any challenges. Let me know, and I would love to discuss them with you down in the comment section below. But anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video, man. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Again, I'd really appreciate it. And if anybody wants to help me out on this venture, feel free to uh, reach out to me. I don't know why you'd want to, because it's going to be a lot of time and effort and energy and money. Well, not money, because I'm paying for it, but you get the point. Don't cross the line like me when I tried to do this right now. You
Across the line I've been 